I'm just uh, brushing up on some basics before the presentation. Yeah. So, if you're free now, could you explain your work? So, uh, what we do are optimization problems related to chemistry. Optimization problems are seen everywhere, uh, from engineering to business to even everyday, day-to-day life activities. So, uh, for example, say you have to run 10 errands across 10 different locations in the city starting from the west end and you have to complete these errands as soon as possible and then reach back to the west end. So this is an optimization problem uh, where the objective function or the function that you want to optimize is the shortest route that can cover all these 10 different locations. right? So that is an optimization problem. So when you define an optimization problem, the first thing that you have to do is define the objective function. And then you have to choose an algorithm that can solve this problem in the most efficient way. So there are many different algorithms available. So uh, the al- algorithm that you choose will be dependent on your problem. So that's uh, what we do in chemistry. So uh, one area where in chemistry where we use this optimization techniques is uh, when we need to find the most stable geometry of a chemical system that is the lowest energy configuration of that system so uh, as i said before in an optimization problem we first need to define the objective function so in this case our objective function will be the potential energy surface of the chemical system this potential energy uh, surface will be highly rugged it will have peaks and valleys that correspond to transition states or different local minima energy geometries and so on. So as the number of atoms in the chemical system increases, the complexity or the ruggedness of this potential energy surface increases and it becomes more and more difficult to locate the global minimum geometry that is the most stable geometry of that chemical system. So this is where we need to use a efficient global optimization technique. So there are uh, different types of techniques as I said before and one set of such techniques are inspired from nature. So, as you know, nature can uh, nature always solves complex problems all the time using different stochastic techniques, like from uh, the evolution of species to the foraging behavior of animals. Uh, there is always an optimization problem that the nature tackles using stochastic techniques. So, one such uh, set of technique is called swarm intelligence. The swarm intelligence is based on the collective intelligence of a swarm of particles like a school of fish or a flock of bird. So the technique that we use in our lab is called particle swarm optimization. So once the potential energy surface is defined, we use this particle swarm optimization to find the global minimum geometry of that chemical system from this surface. So I can explain to you this technique through some uh, animations. So as you can see, what we do is, we define the surface, then we initialize some particles on the surface. These particles can interact with each other, they communicate with each other, and then they update their positions. And this keeps on happening until all of them gets to the global minimum position. So that's what is happening in this algorithm. So there are uh, some factors that decides on how this uh, updation occurs for each particle. So there are three main factors. One is the current position of the particle. So as you can see from this diagram, uh, this is a school of fish. So each fish will be a particle in this potential energy surface and it will update its position based on uh, these three factors. So the first factor, as I said, is the current position of the particle or the current velocity of the particle. And then uh, the second factor, which is an important factor, is it's, it's a cognitive factor. It's based on its experience. So each particle will have a memory which it will use uh, when it's moving to the next step in the surface. So that is a second factor. 
now the third factor is a social factor so uh, so what it does is each particle when it updates its position will also use the collective experience of the entire swarm before it moves to the next step so there are these three factors that determines how the fish moves from one position to the next position so each fish in the swarm will move in this fashion and finally they'll be able to locate the global minimum of the surface so that's what happens in this particle swarm optimization in our lab we mainly use this particle swarm optimization to understand the confinement effects of uh, atoms and molecules within nanostructures like carbon nanotubes and polyurethanes then for uh, gas absorption and separation applications uh, of these uh, membrane like materials like graphene and so on uh, whereas in other groups uh, across the world uh, optimization techniques like particle swarm optimization has been used to predict crystal structure geometries and even find the best confirmation of a ligand that talks into a protein and so on so uh, there are a lot of applications what we focus on are mainly these which is it's quite interesting work and uh, it's really fascinating to know that it shows for us new angles yeah good luck to you guys thank you it's nice to catch you bye bye